Good afternoon, and welcome to Unlocking Belonging, Empowering Black Male Journeys in Medicine. We are thrilled to have you here for this important event. My name is Daryl Trailer, and joining me is my colleague, Ebony Anderson. Together, we'll be guiding you through a discussion aimed at addressing and enhancing the experiences of Black men in osteopathic medicine and medicine as a whole. This event is designed to foster conversations that empower and inspire while acknowledging both the unique challenges and the potential pathways to success for Black men entering and navigating medicine. Throughout our time together, we'll explore key strategies for creating environments of belonging and opportunities that can help unlock the full potential of Black male physicians. We invite you to engage fully, ask questions, share your experiences, and most importantly, take part in building a more inclusive, equitable future in healthcare. Let's get started. Now, let's take a look at today's agenda. We will begin with an introduction where we'll connect this presentation to the broader theme of unlocking belonging in higher education and discuss how belonging is crucial for black male medical students. Next, we'll dive into the study overview, which presents key findings from research on black male osteopathic medical students, otherwise known as BMOMs, highlighting their experiences and challenges in navigating medical education. We'll explore the themes of underrepresentation and the bias in osteopathic medicine, focusing on the impact of underrepresentation, stereotyping, and bias on students' sense of belonging and their overall academic journey. Following that, we will discuss financial and social barriers, examining how these pressures create obstacles to success and contribute to feelings of exclusion. We'll then transition into discrimination in clinical settings, which looks at the bias Black male students face during their rotations and how it hinders both belonging and professional development. Our next section focuses on resilience and coping strategies, where we'll highlight the remarkable resilience these students demonstrate even amidst substantial challenges and the coping mechanisms they use to navigate their environments. We will then present insights on institutional support, offering recommendations for how medical institutions can better support Black male students and foster inclusive environments. Finally, we'll wrap up with a conclusion summarizing key insights and providing actionable recommendations on how medical schools and institutions can unlock belonging for marginalized students. Let's dive into the first section of our agenda. So, as we begin on as we as we begin, let's focus on the conference theme, which is where are my keys? Unlocking belonging in higher education. This theme underscores the critical role that a sense of belonging plays in student success, particularly for underrepresented groups such as black male medical students. Now, let's connect this theme to the content of our presentation, belonging and representation. Underrepresentation leads to isolation and a lack of belonging, which can significantly hinder student success. To address this, Institutions should focus on increasing representation and provide adequate support for these students. Systemic barriers. Black male osteopathic medical students often face bias and discrimination, which deeply affects their sense of belonging in both academic and clinical settings. For true inclusion, institutional changes are needed to foster environments that support and uplift underrepresented students. Resilience and coping. Despite these challenges, Black male osteopathic medical students and black men in medicine in general consistently show resilience, primarily through strong support systems. By nurturing and supporting resilience, we can help unlock belonging in higher education, ensuring that all students have the opportunity to thrive. With these concepts in mind, let's continue exploring how we can foster belonging and empowerment for black male journeys in medicine. So I want to give an overview of the study now. The dissertation study by Ebony Anderson is titled Stress, Resilience, and Coping, a Cross-Sectional Study of Black Male Osteopathic Medical Students. This research focuses on stress, resilience, and coping mechanisms among Black male osteopathic med medical students within the context of osteopathic medical education. The study emphasizes how these students navigate academic and social challenges while coping with systemic barriers. Study importance. This research is critical because it highlights the severe underrepresentation of Black males and osteopathic medical schools. They only comprise 2.1% of the overall national student body. The study delves into how this lack of representation combined with academic stress, racial challenges, and systemic barriers directly impacts the mental health of BMOMs, exacerbating their experience of stress and isolation. The connection to belonging is this. So a key focus of this research is how isolation and the lack of support in predominantly white institutions or PWIs affect Black male osteopathic medical students' sense of belonging. The study also explores how resilience and coping strategies serve as essential tools for these students to foster belonging and persistence, despite the systemic challenges they face. 
This research sheds light on critical areas for improving support and ensuring that osteopathic medical education is inclusive and empowering for underrepresented students. So for the next few slides, I'm going to discuss the themes of underrepresentation and bias in osteopathic medicine. In the first theme, I want to talk about underrepresentation. In 2020, 2021, Black males represented only 2.1% of osteopathic medical students, which is a stark underrepresentation in a field that demands diversity. This lack of representation creates significant challenges both academically and socially for Black male osteopathic medical students, again known as BMOMs. One of the key consequences of this underrepresentation is feelings of isolation. When students do not see others who look like them or share similar experiences, it becomes difficult to feel a sense of belonging in their academic and professional environments. This isolation is compounded by the difficulty in finding mentors who can relate to their unique struggles. The shortage of Black faculty and senior professionals in osteopathic medicine limits access to guidance, role models, and advocates who understand the specific challenges these students face. Without representation in leadership or faculty roles, BMOMs miss out on opportunities for mentorship that are crucial for navigating the complexities of medical education. Underrepresentation is therefore a central challenge to unlocking belonging for Black males in higher education. Addressing this issue is critical to improving both student success and institutional inclusivity, fostering environments where diversity is celebrated and supported. So in my second theme, I discuss stereotyping and bias. B moms often face stereotyping, microaggressions, and implicit bias from faculty, peers, and even patients. The stereotyping can take many forms, from assumptions about their academic abilities to expectations that they are only interested in athletics. Such biases often result in microaggressions, subtle or overt comments, and behaviors that further reinforce their harmful assumptions. These encounters create an environment that undermines the student's confidence and sense of professional belonging. The impact of these experiences is profound. B-moms experience heightened stress, often linked to the pressure of being constantly scrutinized or having to work harder to prove their capabilities. This leads to a lack of confidence in academic and clinical settings where students may feel that they are not judged fairly or given the same opportunities as their peers. Over time, this pressure can cause withdrawal from academic life where students disengage from participation or underperform due to the emotional and psychological toll stereotyping takes on them. Ultimately, stereotyping and bias severely impact BMOM's ability to feel a sense of belonging within their medical school environment. When students consistently face bias, it reinforces feelings of isolation and alienation, making it harder for them to form supportive relationships or find mentors. Addressing these systemic issues is critical for creating an inclusive educational environment where all students can thrive. So my next theme that I discuss is financial barriers. Financial challenges are a significant barrier for Black male osteopathic medical students with 91.8% relying on financial aid to support their education. And this information again is noted in my dissertation. This reliance on financial support adds considerable financial stress, which directly impacts BMOM's ability to feel included and connected to their peers who may have more resources. Many BMOMs experience feelings of exclusion, particularly when they are unable to participate in social or extracurricular activities due to financial limitations. My study also highlights that the typical debt burden of osteopathic medical students upon graduation is around $240,000, with some students incurring debt to over $300,000. For BMOMs, these financial pressures can create a significant obstacle to fully engaging with their academic community. They often face difficulty in developing a strong sense of belonging because they are excluded from opportunities that may require additional financial resources, such as attending networking events, conferences, or purchasing extra study materials. These financial barriers heighten stress and hinder the ability to develop the resilience and coping strategies necessary to succeed in such a demanding academic environment. To foster a more inclusive environment, institutions must recognize and address these financial disparities to support BMOMs in building both academic and social connections. 
Next, I want to talk about the importance of academic stress. So B moms experience significant academic stress due to the rigorous workload in medical education. The high demands of coursework, clinical responsibilities, and preparation for board exams contribute to a constant feeling of pressure. According to the data reported in my dissertation research, academic workload and performance pressure were among the major stressors identified by my participants with 70.6% of B moms reporting that they regularly experience high levels of academic stress. Adding to this stress is the challenge of navigating the social dynamics within predominantly white institutions, also known as PWIs. B moms may often face microaggressions and implicit biases from peers and faculty making it difficult to form supportive academic and social networks. This creates a sense of isolation as B moms may feel they do not fully belong or are not understood within their academic environments. According to the study, over 60% of respondents indicated that navigating these dynamics added another layer of stress to their academic experience. These stressors not only affect B moms' academic performance, but also hinder their ability to fully integrate into both the academic and social communities at their institutions. The combined pressures of academic workload and the social challenges of PWIs prevent B moms from experiencing a sense of belonging, which is essential for academic success and well being. Institutions must recognize that these intersecting stressors provide and providing targeted support to help B moms manage their academic and social stress are more effective tools. So, in the, con in the context of talking about uh, patients and colleagues in clinical settings, uh, that too can contribute to feelings of alienation. B moms often face bias not only from peers and faculty, but also from patients during clinical rotations. My dissertation data highlighted that 75% of participants reported facing some form of microaggression or bias in clinical settings, where their competency was often questioned simply due to their race. These experiences contribute to feelings of alienation, making it difficult for B moms to fully integrate into the clinical environment and develop their professional identity. And when it comes to discrimination, clinical settings are important avenues for developing both practical skills and professional identity. However, 85% of B moms indicated that these biases and microaggressions have influenced their career choices. And this often pushes them away from specialties that they feel they may face more discrimination in, such as surgery or emergency medicine, and also toward specialties perceived as more welcoming or safer for them. The pervasive discrimination faced by B moms in educational and clinical settings creates significant barriers to their sense of belonging. Nearly 80% of participants expressed that these biases made them feel like outsiders within their own medical communities. This lack of belonging has broader implications for their mental health and their ability to thrive both academically and professionally. Despite the numerous challenges faced, B moms demonstrate remarkable resilience. Based on data from the CD Risk 10 Resilience Scale used in this study, B moms exhibited high levels of resilience with an average score of 29.3 out of a possible 40. This score indicates that while they face systemic challenges, B moms are utilizing internal and external coping mechani mechanisms to persevere. One of the key coping strategies employed by B moms is the building of personal support networks. In this study, 64% of respondents reported relying heavily on family and friends to navigate the stressors of medical school. Additionally, Community resources and mentorship programs were identified as crucial to their ability to cope, with 52% of participants noting that access to mentors significantly contributed to their resilience. Resilience plays a critical role in creating a sense of internal belonging for these students, even in the face of external barriers such as discrimination, bias, and financial stress. The study further highlighted that resilience and coping are closely correlated with the Pearson correlation coefficient of R equals 0.83 with the probability value or p-value being negative 0.001. This suggests that those with higher resilience scores are more likely to engage in adaptive coping strategies. These strategies include seeking emotional support, 
utilizing academic resources, and maintaining the balance between their academic and personal lives. By understanding the factors that foster, foster resilience, we can develop institutional programs that support BMOMs, ensuring that they not only survive, but thrive in medical education environments. BMOMs face significant challenges in their educational journey, and one of the critical obstacles is the lack of adequate mentorship and access to academic resources. According to my study, 91.8% of BMOMs rely on financial aid to support their medical education. This dependency underscores financial barriers and highlights a broader issue. Many BMOMs do not have the same access to mentorship and academic support networks that are often available to their non-Black peers. My dissertation research emphasized that limited mentorship opportunities can hinder BMOMs' ability to thrive academically and professionally. Without mentors who share their racial and educational experiences, students often struggle to find relatable guidance, which is vital for navigating the demands of medical school. This lack of representation in faculty and leadership roles further exacerbates the issue, leading to feelings of isolation and marginalization. To address these gaps, institutions must implement mentorship programs specifically designed to support BMOMs and other underrepresented students. Inclusive policies should also be adopted, which encourage diversity in faculty recruitment and establish formal mentoring systems that pair students with mentors who can provide both academic and emotional support. Additionally, institutions must ensure that financial aid packages are robust and responsive to the needs of students from lower socioeconomic backgrounds. Creating institutional cultures that foster belonging is essential for marginalized students, particularly for B moms who are already underrepresented in osteopathic medical schools. By building inclusive environments, institutions can help students become or overcome external barriers and develop a strong sense of community, ultimately contributing to their academic success and well being. So, as we explore ways to unlock belonging for marginalized students in medical education, there are several key areas where institutions can take action. First, increasing representation through targeted recruitment is essential. We know that representation matters, and when students see faculty and peers who share their backgrounds and experiences, it fosters a greater sense of belonging. Medical schools can achieve this by focusing on targeted outreach, scholarships, and pipeline programs designed specifically for underrepresented groups like Black male osteopathic medical students and Black men in general who seek to enter uh, medicine. Creating these opportunities not only helps to diversify the student body, but also signals to underrepresented students that they are valued and welcome. Second, fostering mentorship programs specifically for marginalized students is critical. Mentorship provides guidance and support that can help students navigate the challenges of medical school. Institutions need to create formalized mentorship programs where students from underrepresented backgrounds are paired with mentors who can relate to their experiences. These mentors can play a pivotal role in offering academic support career guidance, and emotional encouragement, which are essential for thriving in medical school. Finally, addressing systemic biases in both the curriculum and institutional practices is necessary to create an inclusive educational environment. This means institutions must critically examine their curricula to ensure that diverse perspectives are represented. Additionally, implicit bias and clinical training and faculty-student interactions needs to be addressed. By creating a curriculum that reflects the diverse realities of healthcare in America and ensuring that institutional practices promote equity, medical schools can help all students feel that their contributions are valued and their experiences are respected. We've explored several important themes during this discussion, beginning with the underrepresentation of Black male osteopathic medical students. This underrepresentation with Black males comprising just 2.1% of osteopathic medical students in the United States often leads to isolation and a lack of belonging. Without, without sufficient representation, Black male students find it difficult to connect with peers and mentors who understand their unique experiences. Additionally, systemic biases and financial barriers present significant obstacles to both academic and professional success. From bias in educational and clinical settings to the burden of financial aid dependency, with over 91% of BMOMs in this study relying on financial aid, these students face compounded challenges that hinder their ability to thrive. Despite these hurdles, one of the key takeaways from this study is that resilience demonstrated by BMOMs uh, having strong support systems, including personal networks and mentorship, 
really help them to overcome the challenges to their sense of belonging and, able, and enables them to push forward in their educations. So to truly unlock belonging in U.S. medical education, we must focus on increasing representation and support systems for marginalized students. Targeted recruitment, scholarships, and pipeline programs are also vital for creating a more diverse student body and ensuring that these students feel included. Next, it's essential to address bias in both educational and clinical settings. This means examining curricula, institutional policies, and faculty-student interactions for implicit biases and making adjustments to ensure that, ensure that we have inequitable uh, learning environments. Finally, fostering resilience through strong mentorship programs and community building is crucial. These support systems empower students to navigate the challenges they face and develop a strong sense of internal belonging. So for a final thought, ultimately, building inclusive and supportive environments is not just beneficial, but essential for a long belonging in U.S. medical education. Only by addressing systemic issues and fostering a culture of diversity and inclusion can we ensure that all students, particularly those from marginal, marginalized backgrounds, have the opportunity to succeed and feel truly heard. So here's the reference to uh, Dr. Anderson's dissertation. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And we thank you for attending. Please don't forget to complete the survey that is in the chat. Thank you again. Thank you.